yourself. Yeah, so I would like to, in part, to speak about um, International Women's Day in March 2007. International Women's Day is sort of the, the day that celebrates women's struggle in history and has been a day uh, for about 100 years, over 100 years. And there are demos in several cities around the world, big demos, kind of uneventful. And Montreal has had several of these demos in, this, in March 2007. Uh, Women of Diverse Origins was organizing the demo. And in the course of the demo, the police moved in and arrested a particular person in that process were, were quite brutal um, and ended up beating three women um, to different degrees. Uh, in order to, to arrest this one person, which was actually Jane. Um, and I guess sort of the, like, the things that came up during that were the idea that a police intervention in such a, a large, peaceful, pleasant um, demo that had high spirits where people were working together, where there was sort of nothing questionable happening. People were walking down the street in, in traffic, I guess, but but not any different from most other demonstrations that the police would be willing to sort of move in from the back of the demo to arrest somebody who's walking on the sidewalk, not as part of the demo, and in about the middle of where the demo is walking, and to sort of allow the sort of confusion and melee to happen in order to just sort of pinpoint one person and, and, and also to beat up people in the process. And so these, the intimidation, the isolation that people feel in the situations that the sort of after dealing with both the effects of, of police brutality but also having then to deal with sort of media statements afterwards, having to go to court and act as witnesses or to spend days in court, you know, trying to get your friends out to be calling for solidarity uh, in the courtroom um, are also things that take away from, from the energy, the feelings of sort of momentum and spirit that came out of that particular demo. Um, it was particularly striking that there was police brutality on International Women's Day, police brutality against women who weren't breaking law, who weren't doing anything wrong, per se. Um, but, but more broadly than that, sort of the, like, the effect that that had on people's uh, feelings and people's ability to continue sort of doing the organizing that they're doing and focusing the message on women's struggle and where it's at um, today. Uh, I also sort of wanted to touch on a campaign that was happening around the same time in 2006, 2007, called Stop Huntington and Cruelty, which was part of a <coughs> campaign against uh, Huntington Life Sciences, which is a company that does the dissection on surgery operations, testing on live animals. And the Stop Huntington <coughs> and Cruelty, or SHAC, which is how it's known, was a campaign for animal rights that was based in the US, at the UK, and Canada at the time. And in the US and the UK, um, people were facing years in prison, um, going through trials, heavy police repression, etc. And in Canada, um, most of the sort of activities that were happening were targeting companies that had contracts with Huntington Life Sciences. So asking them to break their contracts through visiting their homes sometimes at night with a demo or during the day having demos at their offices, letter campaigns, that sort of thing. Um, and for me, this is sort of like one of the formative moments in understanding sort of the police role in uh, in the repression of social movements of, of understanding that there is very few situations in which the cops are going to help out in struggles. Um, and so the Shack demos mostly were held in the <coughs> uh, fall of 2007. And demos were held every two weeks or a month or so. And in almost every situation, the demo was shut down or disrupted by the police in some capacity. And that ranged from demos where everyone would be arrested and driven to the outskirts of the city and dropped off and told to find their way back at night in the winter sometimes. Um, where people would be arrested, um, would be charged, uh, and have their charges just sort of disappear. And some of the charges were from just obstructing justice to, uh, to possession of weapons for people having, you know, like a pocket knife or a, you know, a stabbing knife on them when they were arrested. Um, and yeah, again, the, the charges were dropped usually before they made it to court for most people. But even just having to go through that process of being arrested over and over again with your friends and, and waiting for these papers to come in the mail, waiting for people to, you know, possibly have to deal with these charges was something that was very difficult for people to deal with. Um, people were even arrested at times for jaywalking. So an entire 20 people were arrested and detained. <coughs> against the wall of an apartment building for over an hour and eventually given tickets for jaywalking anywhere from $37 to $500 in Montreal, I think it's 
crazy. I've never ever seen or heard of anyone getting a ticket for jaywalking in any other context. Um, at the time, some of the people that were involved in the Stop Punching the Animal Cruelty campaign uh, had their house raided um, <coughs> at gunpoint early in the morning, and and they did face charges and are still in the process of dealing with their trial. And throughout that, um, it became clear that that several people who were involved with the Shet campaign had been monitored, had had their phones tapped, uh, etc. And <coughs> at the same time, the RCMP were also stopping people that they knew either on their way to or from these demos, and sort of pulling out files full of papers and saying, you know, like, this is your file, like, do you want me to show you what's in it? Um, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't want to be going and getting a sick of files, so just sort of more, more intimidation. So, and just sort of bringing these up as a way of saying these examples of of ways of repressing that particular movement. Um, so from the arrest, uh, donation, and general surveillance, and sort of being telling people sort of where they were at, uh, that it, does, it just discouraged people, and it was one of the reasons that the Shack campaign stopped. Uh, it was a fairly isolated campaign at the time in Montreal, and didn't have a lot of support from other campaigns, and that made it really easy to sort of, to have these events and for the police to act the way they did without sort of any larger outcry of the people being able to respond very effectively. So. <coughs> okay. On peut pouvoir prendre un peu de temps pour parler parce que je peux euh, en fait montrer un vidéo euh, qui illustre en fait euh, un petit peu le, le point que faisait Jackie un peu plus tôt sur euh, la, euh, la division, le, la, la, la stratégie un peu de, de diviser pour, euh, pour régner. Euh, la vidéo que, que je vais vous montrer en fait, a été tournée le 1er mai 2008, qui était en fait la première manifestation euh, explicitement anticapitaliste qui en fait, euh, marquait une rupture avec euh, la manifestation euh, syndicale qui, cette année-là, a eu lieu en fait, le, le 3 mai. Et c'est une manifestation qui a été marquée par une, une répression militaire de, de la part euh, du service de police de la ville de Montréal. Euh, euh, apparemment, là, il n'y avait, avait absolument rien qui justifiait une, une, une répression aussi brutale que ça. Et c'est en fait un, un événement qui me concerne personnellement parce que j'ai été en fait ciblé. Je ne sais pas dans quelle mesure j'ai été ciblé, mais j'ai été la, une des seules personnes qui est arrêtée euh, ce jour-là de façon assez brutale. On voit la situation euh, dans les vidéos. Et en fait, euh, la raison pour laquelle j'ai choisi de présenter cette vidéo-là, c'est euh, pour illustrer le point de l'importance de documenter les activités. Euh, de répression euh, du SPVM, euh, en l'occurrence dans les manifestations et euh, dans, les, dans les événements qui sont organisés par des mouvements sociaux un peu plus radicaux. Euh, euh, je vais juste pour mettre en fait en contexte, quand je l'ai dit, c'était une manifestation qui était explicitement anticapitaliste. Euh, et euh, c'était, c'est arrivé ça le 1er mai, quelques semaines seulement après. Euh, euh, les émeutes de la Coupe Stanley, je ne sais pas si vous vous souvenez, mais euh, au printemps 2008, euh, encore le final de la Coupe Stanley, les Canadiens ont été battus par, euh, par les Bruins et ça, ça a dégénéré dans les rues. Et les flics, le, le, le service de police de ville de Montréal a eu l'air vraiment con et ça a sorti dans les médias un peu n'importe comment où les, les commentateurs sociaux euh, se sont mis à critiquer ouvertement la police comme si c'était des incompétents. Quelques semaines, fast pass forward, quelques semaines plus tard, et on a la manifestation du 1er mai. Et euh, je, je pense que c'est, 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 c'est pertinent euh, de, de souligner euh, ce, ce, ce lien-là, ce parallèle-là, parce qu'on n'avait pratiquement jamais vu là, une, une, une répression aussi euh, sauvage, aussi brutale, euh, sans justification. Alors je pense qu'il y avait une opération de relations publiques qui était associée à ça, dans le sens où le SPVM voulait un peu se racheter. Euh, par rapport à ce qui s'était passé quelques semaines auparavant au centre-ville de Montréal. Euh, je vais revenir un petit peu après pour euh, vous donner un petit peu plus de contexte là, sur mon arrestation. Et, euh, je, euh, c'est quelqu'un derrière qui peut fermer euh, éteindre la lumière. Ah! Yeah, 
quoi que ce soit. Le contexte que la police a euh, évoqué pour intervenir de cette façon-là, c'est qu'il y a eu, en fait, euh, deux, euh, deux néo-nazis, deux petits jeunes films euh, du, euh, de la Chagrin Maisonnée qui ont été euh, battus par les antifascistes. Et quelques minutes plus tard, c'est ce que vous voyez maintenant. Je vais juste regarder le, le, le petit monsieur dans le milieu avec la pantrape. Ce genre d'agression-là, il y en a eu plusieurs tout au long de la réflexion. Je vais faire un petit verre pour l'assumer, ça va être super Là, vous voyez qu'il y a une bombe de, de, de qui est tombée, là. En fait, ils l'ont échappé. Je vais vous montrer comment ils sont dans la ville. Alors, ça s'est passé, là, c'est que, euh, on peut passer, euh, c'est ce qui est dans le dans le centre de dans le centre de et ils ont, euh, ils ont encadré euh, l'ensemble de la manifestation, là, entre, euh, un petit peu passé la rue par euh, apparemment sans motivation. Il y a que 80, de, euh, sinon, tout, euh, tous les manifestants, ils ne savaient pas ce qui se passait à ce moment-là, parce que pour la plupart des gens, il n'y avait pas aucune, euh, aucune notion de ce qui s'était passé au Parlement, c'est-à-dire l'agression des points nazis. Je Alors, selon toute vraisemblance, en fait, ils nous ont encadré à ce moment-là pour essayer de provoquer et justifier une arrestation de Marx. Mais c'est bien passé. Pourquoi 